All right, so guys, we got a video recommended by one of you guys uh, in the Discord. Links in the channel if you want to go check it out. Um, so yeah, we're going to check that out today. It's called The Longest Con in Video Game History by Carl Jobst. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, this came out four years ago. It's kind of an old video, but it was recommended. So let's go check it out. All right, let's check it out, guys. So many lies. Okay, this has... 3.3 million views guys <laughs> uh okay so guys uh this is carl jobs uh longest con in video gaming history let's check it out everyone knows todd rogers is a liar and a cheat but i don't think they truly know the full extent of his transgressions i don't know who his todd rogers is so we'll have to check him out. easily falsifiable that it is a disgrace that he got the attention he did for years, journalists parroted his fabricated stories as truth, without the slightest of effort to fact-check his claims. His ultimate downfall was mathematics, and the inescapable conclusion that many of the times he had claimed to have achieved were simply impossible. These facts are well known and have been exhaustingly documented, but what many don't know is just how corrupt and bold Todd really is. He lied constantly and confidently about things that take less than five minutes to prove false but no one bothered to double check his claims. Todd may have been a compulsive liar, but when so many people believe extraordinary claims without checking for themselves and then spread these claims, they mm. are all complicit. Today we will delve into the history of Todd's most infamous story, the oldest world record in video game history, his time of 5.51 seconds on Activision's Dragster. Through what? uncovering the truth, you will begin to realize just how gullible people really are, and we will quell this notion that Todd Wait, so is this guy like an OG? This guy's like an OG gamer, right? So he looks he looks like an OG gamer with that uh, ponytail and stuff. Dude, 5.5 seconds is insane. You do so good with streaming without interaction too. Take the credit you're due. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. Rogers simply lied. He lied. Oh, yeah. Game score. He did much more than that, and it was much, much worse. Ooh. All right. Dude, wait, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, look at that bowl cut. Dude, he's looking good. Was that 1970s? <laughs> much more than that, and it was much, much worse. The longest standing video in 2012. Video game history. Guinness World Records officially recognized Todd Rogers as holding the longest okay. lasting video game record, a time of 5.51 on Dragster for the Atari 2600. Ooh, now, old. given that a score of 5.51 was later proven to be completely impossible, how on earth did this acknowledgement ever happen? Well, let's find out. The first step on our journey backwards takes us to Twin Galaxies. Twin Galaxies is the scorekeeping organization that Guinness relies on for many of its records. So in the case of the oldest video game record, Guinness took the word of Twin Galaxies, who had advised them that the oldest record was Todd's 5.51. Hmm. According to Twin Galaxies, the 5.51 was achieved on the 1st of September 1982. Okay, so number two is 5.61? Oh, okay, so that I guess that's a pretty big difference. That makes a big difference, I guess. Hundred percent, ninety-two points. David B. Yang C. Two thousand. Whoa, nineteen eighty-two versus two thousand two. Wow. Okay, that's a big difference. On the now removed Guinness World Records page, it also stated that Todd has held the high score record on Dragster from the 1st of December 1980. Hmm. It also gives us the origin of the claim, stating that it was officially recognized by Activision. This recognition from Activision was the entire foundation for adding the record to the Twin Galaxies database. In the past, Twin Galaxies had two main ways to validate scores. You either had to perform the score live in front of a Twin Galaxies referee, or you needed to provide mm -hmm. video evidence of the score. I know this guy. What's this guy's name? Who is this guy? I know him. Why do I know him? Why am I blanking on his name? This guy. He was in like controversy, right? As being like a cheater? This guy is the Donkey Kong che Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I know this guy. <laughs> the thank you. The Donkey Kong cheater. Also, pausing a lot, sorry, but... Uh, Activision? Is that old? I did not know that. Wow, that's pretty old. Todd's 5.51 satisfied neither of these requirements, and this was a rare instance where Twin Galaxies relied on the adjudication from a third party to recognize the score. This was confirmed by the Twin Galaxies founder, Walter Day. Walter also mentioned that it was based on Guinness acceptance as well, 
which is totally bizarre and one of the stupidest causality loops that I've ever heard. We will get to this point a bit later in the video. So Guinness relied on Twin Galaxies, Twin Galaxies relied on mm -hmm. Activision, but how exactly did Twin Galaxies get confirmation from Activision? Mm. Well, the original source was an Activision newsletter called Activisions that had seven volumes and ran Ooh. from the fall of 1981 until fall of 1983. Within these newsletters is the proof of Todd's claims. So let's look inside and see what we find. Volume 1, Fall of 1981. The World Class Dragster Club has 2,900 members, and the club has the only record jointly held by a father and son. 5.61 seconds. Mm. Okay, well this is surprising as Guinness said Todd had held the record since 1980. Let's have a look at Volume 2, Winter of 1982. Here, Todd does hold the record, now at 5.57, along mm -hmm. with two other people, Greg Nichols and Tony Armstrong. Volume 3, released in the spring of 1982, once again shows that three people hold the dragster record, which remains at 5.57. In the fall of 1982, Volume 4 was released, showing that now four people had tied 5.57. In December of 1982, Volume 5 was released. It's important to remind you that according to Twin Galaxies and Guinness World Records, Todd achieved the 5.51 on the 1st of September 1982, so we should find his record in this newsletter. Right. Well, it does say that the record for Dragster is 5.51, but who holds the record? Uh -huh. On the next page, it lists two people as having the Dragster record. William Stewart and Kevin Kopachewski. Todd Rogers did not even hold the record as a tie at this point. Ooh. In fact, right. Activision would not even credit Rogers as even tying 5.51 until spring of 1983, with volume 6 of the Activision's newsletter. Here, he is shown as being the third person to have achieved it, after the two gentlemen who were still credited from the previous volume. There was literally no published document from Activision that recognized Todd Rogers as having a 5.51 in 1982. Mm. The final volume of the Activision's newsletter, released in the fall of 1983, did not feature Dragster at all. In the spring of 1983, there was another mention of the Dragster record in Activision's Fun Club News, which was another official Activision publication. In this newsletter, it stated that the Dragster world record was a 5.1. Conveniently, despite this coming from the horse's mouth directly, it was completely ignored by Twin Galaxies and everyone else as well. 5.1? So Dude, that's... Well, so, the, okay, so his record was 5.51 and that's 5.1? Okay, that's a big difference. Also, yeah, that was a lie back then when he said... He got in 1983 in 1980, versus 1982, so that was a, a year difference. Oh, never having actually been credited as having a 5.51 in 1982. Right. And even though there were two other people that had legitimately proven 5.51 before him. Yeah. And even after Activision itself published the world record as being a 5.1, it was Todd that ended up on Twin Galaxies, standing Why? alone above the rest with the world record of 5.51 seconds. We don't know who entered Todd's score into the Twin Galaxies database. During the Dragster dispute on the Twin Galaxies forums, it did become known that Todd had a long history of inputting his own scores, so that is definitely a possibility. Regardless, whomever did it did not base it on documents provided from Activision. There is a word to describe this. There he is again. It's called corruption. Yep. So when Walter Day says this... Many, many years ago, when Todd brought his score on, uh, on Dragster to us, it was not adjudicated by Twin Galaxies. It was a score that had been dealt with by Activision, and then, if I remember correctly, was uh, uh, you know, accepted by Guinness. So when Todd came forward, he didn't play first. We didn't adjudicate his score. We accepted the Activision uh, confirmation, the Activision adjudication, and the Guinness acceptance. So that was the basis for it being recognized by Twin Galaxies. Okay, so, okay. Oh, I'm back. No, uh, you're back, Mr. Mid. Welcome back. Sometimes you, uh, Musa. Sometimes you might hear him. Uh, might hear him be called Todd Rogers, Todd Todgers. From now, uh, he misspelled his own name. Oh, okay. Okay, so I guess there's some. Um, well, we're gonna find out. But my inkling is that somebody in Activision and this Todd Rogers, whatever his name is, like obviously there's corrupt. Like he was saying corruption. So there might be some corruption going on in Activision. And somebody in Activision. Maybe it was paid off by Tom. My theory is paid off by Tom Rogers or something to give him that score without it being adjudicated. 
Uh, so that was the basis for it being recognized by Twin Galaxies. Right, right, right. Okay. He's lying. When Todd He's says lying. this... Yes. So over the period of 1980 uh, to 1982, really yeah. I whittled my time down on the Dragster score. Um, and there were other people that had tied me, but never once beat the score to where I was in second place. I would make a score, they would tie me. I would break my world record, they would tie me. I'd break my world record, and so on, until about the early part of 1982, March or April, I submitted a the original first 5.51 Polaroid to Activision. He's lying. Mm. They didn't just lie about the chronology of the Activision recognition either. They also fabricated a story about Rogers being recognized by Guinness in the 80s. In an interview in 2013, Rogers stated, It wasn't until 1982 at the Consumer Electronics Show that Guinness officially recognized my record, which was later published in the 1986 Guinness Book of World Records. Before we fact check this claim, it's worth noting that Todd's story of how Guinness came to know of the Dragster record has changed several times. In this article, he said it happened at the Consumer Electronics Show, but in other interviews, he has stated that Activision sent a Polaroid to Guinness, and other times mm. he has stated that he doesn't even know how Guinness came to know of the record in the first place. In any case, the great thing about books is the fact that we can read them. So when someone right. makes a claim that they were published in a book, it's theoretically possible to check to see if it's true. Unfortunately, this does take a couple of minutes of research, which is something that journalists these days don't seem very interested in doing. Yeah, dude. The journalists, man. They suck today. Dude, the news articles are correct. Have you, have you read, like, journalist articles recently? It sucks. We can read them, but I don't think Todd can. Yeah, dude. Todd claims that he was in the 1986 Guinness Book of World Records. Spoiler mm -hmm. alert, he isn't. Okay. Not only that, but the book says something very interesting about the nature of scores it recognized at that time. In the book, Guinness stated, Highest score records are meaningless because of the tremendous variance between the games and cassettes available for play at home and in arcades. Hmm. Each machine, each joystick setting, each environment is different so that skill and yeah. endurance cannot be measured and compared with precision. Therefore, the only records worth publishing are those of contest winners. To ascertain what scores in video games are actually world records, competitions have been held under the auspices of Twin Galaxies, with Walter Day as coordinator. In order to verify video game scores, Guinness relied entirely on Twin Galaxies. The only records that were recognized by Twin Galaxies were those that were set in a live competition setting. That makes sense, Guinness yeah. would continue posting these video game world records for a couple more years in the 80s, before interest dried up and they were excluded entirely until many years later. Suffice to say, Rogers was never featured, or mentioned, in a single one of these books. A quick recap before we go deeper. Guinness accepted the record because of Twin Galaxies. Twin Galaxies accepted the record because of Activision and Guinness, which creates a causality loop that may destroy the entire universe. Okay. Activision recognized two other people as having set the record of 5.51 first, and would later state that the world record was 5.1. Okay. <laughs> Man versus computer. Man versus computer, Todd's most intricate fable. The legend goes that David Crane, the creator of Dragster, programmed a computer to run a perfect Dragster race. The perfect Dragster race resulted Ooh. in a time of 5.4 seconds, Ooh. which was astonishing given that Todd had beaten this time. Five the way one, Todd tells yeah. this story has- five point, I'm in the opinion of the 5.1 was a misprint, right? That seems like really like, uh, that's a huge, variance from 5.51 to 5.1 that's got to be a misprint i think i yeah i agree changed and evolved slightly over the years but the earliest instance i found was back in 2001. rogers recalled activision thought this score was impossible what i didn't know was they had a computer simulated perfect run the computer's run was of a 5.54 and activision wanted to know how i could do better I told them how I engaged the clutch until zero, and then popped the clutch, already in second gear. That explained the mystery, and Activision sent Todd a certificate with his high score on it, congratulating him on his new record. The timeline of this story is important, as Todd claims that all of this happened in 1982. In fact, early 1982. 
As we already know from Activision's newsletters though, this isn't true at all. The specific story of Todd submitting the 5.51 and Activision's response to it slowly started to become more fleshed out over the years. In 2005, he provided more details. He told of a phone call from Jan Marcella, who wanted to know how he shifted hmm. his dragster. Jan Marcella was the customer relations representative at Activision. Obviously, if anyone knew of the various advanced dragster shifting techniques, it would be her. Todd proclaimed, To this very day I am the only person officially to have beaten Activision's perfect run. Something must have happened throughout the years. Perhaps people started digging into the Activision archives and were discovering that Todd really wasn't the only or even the first person to achieve a 5.51. It must have come up at some point, because Todd would eventually change his story to include the other two record holders. One day, Jan Marcella called me up and said, Hey, I want to know how you shift. And when I explained, <coughs> when I explained to her um, how I shifted, I engaged the clutch on the countdown, revved the engine to give my dragster fuel, and then popped the clutch at, you know, the, at the before, before the zero, to get some additional lift off on my dragster, she says, okay, well, I have something to tell you. Uh, there were two other people that tied your score, but they shifted identically to our perfect computer. Mm. We had a, a computer that did a perfect run of a 5.54, and they beat it using the same technique as the computer did, and they didn't understand how that could be possible. So they disqualified the two people for attaining that score only because I was the one that shifted differently than their computer did. Dude, you can't beat a computer that's programmed to beat it. I don't believe you can beat the computer, dude. Right? Am I crazy for thinking that? It's like trying to beat uh, a chess computer. The story now has multiple parts to it to unlock, so we will go through one at a time. First, is there any evidence that Activision simulated a perfect run of Dragster that resulted in a 5.54? No. Oh, Every okay. single piece of information about this story comes from Todd, and oh, nowhere I see. else. It's almost oh. impossible that it actually happened though, as what Todd is implying is artificial intelligence, which was practically non-existent at the time. It was a big deal when a full 15 years later a computer was able to beat Garry Kasparov in chess. There is no chance an oh. algorithm was created in 1982 to play Dragster perfectly. There are two other possibilities. The first is that David Crane somehow knew how to play Dragster perfectly and crafted each input individually to create what speedrunners call a tool-assisted speedrun. These okay. crafted runs aren't made by computers. They are built by humans with a deep knowledge of game mechanics. So this almost certainly didn't happen either. If anything happened even remotely close to what Rogers was referring to, it was likely to have revolved around mathematics. Dragster is a reasonably simple game, and you can use math to try to predict the optimal outcome. That's the entire code? What is that, like a hundred lines? Wow. Wow. Games have come a long way, guys. I've seen ChatGPT beat Sockfish, though. Oh, I see. It's a reasonably simple game, and you can use math to try to predict the optimal outcome. The math that Crane potentially used would have been very oversimplified, which is why his result was not correct. In 2017, it was proven by multiple people that 5.57 is actually the fastest possible time you can achieve. When asked about his simulation Five, in January... Okay, so wait, let me see that again. 5.57. The presented software analysis model concluded that achieving a score of times a score times of less than 5.57 seconds is not possible under the standard and normal play conditions, okay? Further evidence has been presented in this investigation from numerous credible sources confirming the veracity of the software model and analysis conclusion. Okay. Official statement from Twin Galaxies, I see. Actually the fastest possible time you can achieve when asked about so that so that sorry pausing again so that 5.4 wouldn't even 5.54 that uh that todd whatever said todd we're gonna call him todd uh said was not even like it was just bs oh hey have a blessed day uh evening everyone congratulations again augie g uh the sign the sun is up time for me to get some sleep dude sorry <laughs> pleasure pleasure meeting you all till next time peace and blessings dude thank you so much Thank you for so much for joining, and thank you for subbing. Thank you for checking me out on Twitch. 
Um, the sun has been up for me for a few hours. Thank you guys so much for joining on the crazy hours. Appreciate it. You know, Japan time is hard to hard to accommodate, uh, folks. But yeah, dude, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Night night. Yeah. All right. Mission in January of 2018. Crane had this to say. I have a vague recollection of writing test code to determine the best possible score, but I don't remember the result. And as I said, if I did have a theoretical limit, and a player beat it by such a small margin, I would believe that player found a way to play the game that was different than the assumptions I used in calculating <coughs> theoretical. This paragraph is really important, because it gives us Crane's frame of mind. He doesn't remember what he thought may have been the theoretical maximum, but even if someone did beat it, and by a small margin, he would think nothing of it. But this is the complete opposite of what Todd is espousing. According to Rogers, the other two players that also achieved 5.51 were disqualified by Crane because they beat his time. Crane's statement confirms that is not what happened, nor would it ever. There was no statement or document from Activision suggesting the other two players were disqualified because it simply never happened. I see. The phone call okay. with Jan Marcella almost certainly Sus. never happened either. Think for a moment about- Let's get some susses in the chat, man. ...about the practicality of the situation. Crane predicts a theoretical best of 5.54, and then asks the customer relations representative, a middle-aged woman whose job it is to sort mail, to call Rogers and the other two dragster record holders to ask them how they shifted their dragsters. It literally makes zero sense. By the way, Todd claims all of this happened throughout the middle of 1982, but we already know Activision didn't print his score until almost a full year later. So if this conversation happened, why did Activision not print Todd's time until almost a year later? And why, if the other two players mm. were disqualified, were they not removed? These are rhetorical questions, obviously, because the simple fact is that this conversation never happened. Ooh, I see. Todd Hypocrite Rogers. <laughs> nice. Dr. Suis. God damn it, wait, my ears, dude, are so sweaty from the headphones, and it's hot. As usual, Japan sucks. <laughs> okay. God damn, I gotta air I gotta aerate my ears. Alright. Todd hypocrite the Rogers. Alright, oh, alright, right, right, right. This is really sus, bros. If Todd deserves a Guinness World Record, it's for being the biggest hypocrite. <laughs> what always bugged me was yes. the fact that Todd threw the other two world record holders under the bus because of- Did I end up watching the embarrassing Halo Street? No, we'll, we'll watch that next stream. This alleged simulation, but when it came to his own time, the same standards did not apply. The mountain of evidence supporting the case that Todd had fabricated his 5.51 was far, far larger than the evidence that supposedly had the other two players disqualified. Even David Crane confirmed that players would have certainly proven their time with evidence to have their times posted in the Activision's newsletter. He stated, Activision validated Todd's drags to score using the accepted methods of the day. The time to question any of those records has passed. He further stated, mm. Those records were set at the time, by a player at the time, and given validation by the authority at the time. Thus, those records should stand. These statements- Oh, interesting. Uh, glad I haven't missed it. I can explain things in it if you need a since so also run. Yeah, actually, I waited, uh, especially for you. I waited to watch this video until you came on, uh, and I'll wait till you guys come on for the other one. Um, you can get this thing that goes around your neck that has two small fans. Yeah, I know about that. But, um, if I do that, you're going to hear that in the mic. It's <laughs> like a lot. Seem really peculiar from someone that Todd says disqualified two players who were already proven and validated. Obviously, William Stewart and Kevin Kobacheski proved their records to Activision, or they wouldn't have been featured in the first place. Is Todd saying they faked their proof? Is Todd suggesting that these two gentlemen are cheats? Did they doctor their photos? Why is he so quick to proclaim them as frauds when he didn't even speak to them? Even if his stories were true, they were disqualified because of a phone call with Activision's customer service representative. That's hardly an exhaustive investigative process. Meanwhile, Todd has had 37 years to prove his record. We have multiple programmers confirm that 5.51 is not possible under any circumstances. He spent two full days with Ben Heck, who could input whatever strategy Rogers wanted with perfect precision. This achieved nothing. He couldn't even get close to his record. 
we have proof that Rogers doctored certificates from Activision. All of his stories and the timelines in which they occur are demonstrably false. But you know what Todd's response to all of this is? You weren't there. I saw that. Stealth, Stealth Viper, welcome to the YouTube chat. Big ah forehead. Yeah, dude. Thanks. I got the... Um... I got the forehead extension, uh, the forehead extender off uh, Amazon. It was like 20 bucks. You should check it out. Someone's gone beyond just trying to do the programming and insert the inputs at the right time. Someone's actually looked at the code, read the code. In fact, multiple people, I get it. I think it's three, maybe four, have looked at the code, analyzed the code, read the code, <laughs> and said, I have looked at this code. I have studied it. It's less than 100 lines of code. I know what's going on. And after reading the code, I am sure there's no way Todd could have got the score. What do you say to that? Well, I say that they weren't there to watch me play it. So who are they? Go get a TARDIS and go back 35 years. You'll be impressed. Dude, nice dodge. Dude, this guy's dodging like real hard, real hard. Dodging the question real hard right now. All right. Well, I have news for Todd. He Ooh. wasn't there when the heroes William Stewart and Kevin Kobacheski achieved the first legitimate 5.51. And these two champions were the ones who really deserved the recognition this entire time. Yeah, where are these guys? I want to see them. All right, what really when happened? When Todd Rogers was banned from Twin Galaxies in early 2018, he made a response post on his Facebook page. There are a lot of lies in this post that relate to things that I haven't covered in this video, but one part immediately struck me upon reading. Rogers stated, I ask this, had I not achieved the score in their presence, why would Activision have acknowledged me beating their perfect run and hired me to demonstrate their games? What also seems to get overlooked is that I was only 16 and really had nothing to gain by fabricating an unobtainable score. Firstly, we know that Activision have already acknowledged two other people as having obtained 5.51 mm. before Todd, R right, so it obviously right. didn't require people to achieve the score in their presence. Secondly, Todd demonstrated Activision games in 1982, which was the year prior to his 5.51 being recognized in the Activision's newsletter, so it had no bearing on that at all. Thirdly, Todd had everything- This is- this guy's just- dude. <laughs> this guy's insane. He's just talking shit with no evidence. The fuck? I'll point out that this isn't the only record he, ha he was found cheating on. Ooh. I see. ...thing to gain by fabricating a score, and Todd himself has stated many times that the entire reason he submitted drags to scores in the first place was to gain recognition. Mm -hmm. The following clips demonstrate that Todd knew very well how much there was to gain, and even confirms that gaining in general was his entire intention to begin with. When Atari came out, uh, I played that quite considerably, and then Activision, which was a third-party developer, came up with a game called Dragster. Uh, when in the Dragster's brochure it says, if you beat this time of the Dragster run, you'll get recognition. Well, that was my golden opportunity. I got my start back in 1980 working for Activision. Um, I opened up a brochure one day playing the old Atari, and I saw that little li list in there that says, well, if you want recognition, break this score. I thought that was my perfect opportunity to make a name for myself. Oh, no, I, I got my big break in 1980. Uh, Activision had uh, published, if you beat the score, you'll get recognition. That was in a game called Dragster. And that's what started the avalanche of working for many different companies because I would submit my scores. Wait a second. So this guy, it's not even for money? Like all he, what? He's doing all this crap just for recognition? What happens? Like, is he, is he going to get something for being recognized? Or is this just like a, what the hell? Is this just like an ego boost for this guy? And one particular show, they wanted to see if I was the real deal. That was yes. In oh. <laughs> uh, at the Consumer Electronics Show in Chicago. And ever since that point on, I've been playing professionally um, for more than 42 software publishers. In 1982, Activision did indeed have Todd demonstrate their games. Todd was getting a lot of attention, and even appeared on a couple of brief TV segments. His claim to fame was his records, and he really believed he was becoming famous. Yeah, I bet. This meant a lot to Todd, and why wouldn't it? It's a pretty big deal for a 17-year-old. But um, when the yeah. Activision's newsletter came out in December of 1982, 
this would have crushed Todd. He was relying on his records to build his image and hopefully build a career. He already had connections with Activision, so when he claimed a time of 5.51 as well, I doubt they even requested proof. The original 5.51s that were printed were likely due to a poor quality photo being misread. The instructions from Activision didn't actually specify you to write down the time on the back of the photograph. So whomever checked the photos probably had to guess what the time was from the photo itself. 5.51 isn't possible to achieve, so obviously they never happened. But once printed, Todd felt he had no choice but to claim it as well. Almost 20 years later, in collusion with Twin Galaxies, Todd's record was inputted into the SCORE database. A fake story was constructed by Todd and repeated by Twin Galaxies in order to gain clout for both parties. <laughs> Several prominent Twin Galaxies members, including Billy Mitchell- There he Mi is. Wait, what? Oh, it's Billy Mitchell. That's his name. Right? Clout for both parties. Several prominent Twin Galaxies members, including Billy Mitchell and yeah. even Walter Day, have been shown to be extremely corrupt. There so he is. The Donkey Kong cheater, Billy Mitchell. <laughs> oh, I knew this guy. I didn't know about Todd Rogers. That's crazy. It was highly likely they all worked together to spread misinformation. The cherry on the cake is that Todd himself lobbied to Guinness for four years to have his fake record recognized by them. Wow. So Guinness was impressed with this. They published in their, their book, finally, after four years of lobbying to them, they published the longest held video gaming record on uh, Dragster <laughs> for the 551. The Three Dollars. Musketeers, yeah. This was all intentionally orchestrated by Todd Rogers to gain money and recognition. Oh, okay, Everything so was it was for money too. By him, with the help of the corrupt members of Twin Galaxies. The key takeaway from this story is not simply that Todd Rogers is a man of low character. It is a lesson that demonstrates just how easily people can be misled when they are quick to believe extraordinary claims without evidence. If there is one person you should never believe without investigation, it is the person that stands to gain from your belief. Today, we haven't even covered the many scores that Todd claimed that were later proven to be impossible. The point is to show that it never should have gotten this far in the first place. The evidence was already there years ago, and the only reason Todd gained as much recognition as he did was because of the laziness of journalists and people with platforms who enabled Todd to spew his lies in front of thousands of people. Thank you. Great video, by the way. Wow. Um, dude, that's a, oh my God. Do journalists are so dumb nowadays. They don't do any research. And um, dude, it's like, that happens not just to this guy. That happens all the time. Like PewDiePie, there was like a, uh, like he said something and it was t taken totally out of context. And one article said, PewDiePie is a racist. Like what? Dude, people just don't do any research. And then people see that article because the, the website that the article is posted on is very popular with like, brain rot people like on twitter the cesspool that is twitter and then they see that and uh they're like oh my god what pewdiepie oh my god hey, guys everybody hey, he's a racist oh my god that they all just start believing they jump everybody jumps on the bandwagon everybody always jumps on the bandwagon and that's probably what happened in this situation too no that's exactly what happened this people just were misled because they're dumb dude people are dumb <laughs> <laughs> most most people are kind of dumb uh todd even uh todd even tried to claim after all this uh, came out that he somehow started in second gear on this particular run and that's why it can be yeah 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 it can't be tied anyway banger video as usual thank you for the recommendation uh the longest con in video game history i didn't even know about this guy uh todd rogers crazy i knew about billy mitchell with the donkey kong stuff i didn't know about this guy this is great i learned something new you learn something new every day i love it uh the longest con in video game history carl jobs came out a, a bit ago but why don't you guys go and uh, subscribe I'm, oops i'm gonna subscribe and uh, why don't you like the video uh yeah always support gotta support um yeah